What's going on, everybody? Hope you're having a great day. So this is not going to be a typical movie review. It's going to be more of a discussion video based off of a few different topics that relate to Marvel and movie theaters. Martin Scorsese, in his opinions, I've never really talked about that before, about how he said that Marvel isn't cinema and those movies are more of roller coaster rides. I want to talk about movie theaters and who's going to them and who's supporting them. And I want to talk about the current state of the MCU. So let's cover these things and I hope it's going to be fun. But before we go further, I I do want to give a special thank you to the sponsor for this video, BetterHelp. The past few years have been filled with massive life adjustments for me, making a film, becoming a father. And this year with the strikes that went on, I wasn't able to take a single meeting when it came to anything regarding a screenplay that I had written, which was very difficult for me in this integral part of my film career. And so it was really great to be able to turn to BetterHelp. BetterHelp connects you with a licensed therapist who is trained to listen and give you helpful, unbiased advice. You can have your therapy sessions as a phone call, as a video chat, or even via messaging if you prefer that, whatever is the most comfortable version of therapy for you. BetterHelp can match you to one of over 30,000 therapists in their network, which gives you access to a wider range of expertise than may be available in your area. And if the therapist you're first match with doesn't feel like the right fit, which can be common when starting therapy, you can easily switch to a new therapist at no additional cost without stressing about insurance, who's in your network, or anything like that. Over 4 million people have used BetterHelp to start living a healthier, happier life. So if you think you might benefit from therapy, check out the link in my description below, betterhelp.com slash Chris Stuckman. That not only supports this channel, but it will also give you 10% off your first month with BetterHelp. That's betterhelp.com slash Chris Stuckman. That link is in the description below. Thank you so much to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. I saw the Marvels. There's a lot of people talking about this movie right now. I'm not really going to talk about it in depth. All I'll say is that it's a short movie. It's a fairly breezy watch. I liked Amon Villani quite a bit as Miss Marvel. I thought she was fantastic, although I don't really know what the movie's about. That's, that's what I'll say. What I really want to talk about is what I don't really consider a debate anymore. It's really just a discussion point that I'm seeing a lot, and it was jump-started when Martin Scorsese said that Marvel movies and superhero films weren't really cinema and that they were more theme park rides and you go to those movies to have fun and that's great. He wasn't really saying that that's wrong. He was just saying that it has its place and that it shouldn't be the entirety of why we go to the movie theaters. And I very much so agree with him. There's a really good video on some of these topics I'm about to get into from Patrick Willems. It's on his channel. It's called, I think it's like, Who's Killing Cinema or Who Killed Cinema? Uh, I'm going to link that in the description below. He makes really great videos. It's like 90 minutes long. It's a feature film in its own right. It's a great video that can educate you on a lot of these topics I'm going to discuss if you don't know anything about them. As far as movies in the MCU after Endgame, I've enjoyed Shang-Chi quite a bit. I liked Spider-Man No Way Home quite a bit. I liked Guardians of the Galaxy 3. Black Panther 2 was fine, uh, but honestly, it's been downhill. I have completely fallen off the train of watching the shows. I, I haven't seen Secret Invasion. I didn't see Loki season two. I didn't see Miss Marvel. And I really do think the major issue, at least for me, is the Disney Plus stuff. I just couldn't keep up with it. It was like, you have to know all of this. And for a minute, they were sort of like making it so you didn't have to watch the shows to get into the movies. But the Marvels is the first big MCU film where you kind of did. Like if you didn't see WandaVision, you might be curious about things that are happening with Monica Rambeau. And if you didn't see Miss Marvel, you need some catching up about her. The film tries its best to do that. And if you didn't see Secret Invasion, apparently that actually will help you <laughs> because I didn't. And I watched and read some other reviews of people saying that the Nick Fury in this movie is nothing like the one that was just in Secret Invasion, that it's almost insulting. I didn't have that experience because I didn't watch that show. So maybe that actually makes the movie better. I don't know. The point is, I stopped caring about this continuity because there was just too much of it. It had to like become my entire life if I wanted to keep up with this fucking story that's happening in these movies. I enjoy watching comic book movies. In fact, I love watching great ones. Obviously, I've had Daredevil behind me for like every video for a couple years now. I love good comic book movies. I have always been very inspired by them. Sam Raimi's first two Spider-Man movies are two of the most influential movies I've ever seen. And Nolan's Dark Knight trilogy is fucking amazing. I'm sitting here wearing a Dragon Ball shirt. That's a manga, also known as a comic book. I mean, 
I don't have to sit here and pretend like I'm above any of this. I get excited about all of these movies, but I also get excited about watching a three and a half hour Martin Scorsese film in theaters too. A lot of people aren't like that. I bumped into a guy the other day at a restaurant who was wearing a Halloween 1978 hoodie. And I was like, oh man, did you know that tonight they're showing that movie in a theater nearby? And he was like, oh, that's cool. Um, I don't really go to movie theaters anymore. And I was like, why? And he said, because I can just, you know, watch it all at home. And that is the mentality of a lot of people, is that it's just easier to watch things at home, and it's why movie theaters are struggling, it's why physical media is struggling. I could do a whole video on how Best Buy is not going to be offering physical media anymore after this holiday season. In fact, I might do a video on that. If I sound elitist in any way by saying, you got to go to the theater, you got to support theater, I understand that. Because when I was a kid, I could only see like one or two movies in theaters a month, and I would always go on the $5 discount day and take advantage of any coupons I ever had, and I get it. It's expensive. But this isn't just about going to a theater to support a theater. It's really about the kinds of movies that are being made. A thousand people have talked about this forever, and I'm not the first person to say this, but the thing is, it's like we often complain that movies aren't the same as they used to be, why don't they make them like they used to, that doesn't look like a real movie, blah blah blah. We hear those complaints all the time, and then we go home and we pirate movies, or we don't buy the Blu-ray, or we don't go to the theater, and we wonder why Hollywood isn't hearing us, and it's because the only way they do is if we spend money. You can bet your ass we're going to get more Five Nights at Freddy's movies because that film did incredibly well, even though it was day and date on Peacock. They hear those things. They recognize those things. My concern with the MCU going downhill is that a lot of people are only going to the movie theaters to watch these giant movies. And if the MCU is going downhill and less people go to the movie theater to watch the MCU movies because A, they're just waiting for Disney Plus, or B, they're not as good anymore. What's gonna be the next big thing that gets people to go to the movie theaters? And I can tell you that this year, I did feel a lot of hope with Barbie and Oppenheimer doing as well as they did. But a lot of that is because we kind of made it a moment. We like told people they had to go watch both and people were like, well, I'm not cool unless I go watch both. I better watch both. And it was definitely bolstered by that, but also they're both really good movies. In fact, Tom Cruise himself was a major supporter of the double feature, even campaigning for it publicly. It'll probably be like Oppenheimer first and then Barbie, I think. I think it's like you want like, Oppenheimer's gonna be on a, on a Friday. Do you know what I mean? And then you, you can go, I'll probably see it in the afternoon. You want that packed audience. And then I want to see Barbie right afterwards with a packed audience. So Friday is like, you know, I used to plan my days where you start out early in the morning and you go to movies all day. And I like doing that, you know, and I'd go from one cinema to the next and I'm going to do that. So I'm going to see them both, both opening day. And in an unfortunate twist of fate, his excellent Mission Impossible film suffered from the Barbenheimer smackdown at the box office. But I do feel a genuine craving from audiences for outside-the-box filmmaking, and I don't think it's just inside my small filmmakers, film lover community that we're all kind of a part of, where we want to see everything and we're excited about film and we talk about movies and it means a lot to us. I know that not everybody's like that. I have tons of friends who watch like two movies in theaters a year, but I am actually a little concerned for movie theaters, for physical media, for some of these things that I do feel are staples of our industry, of what we love. Because everything is changing right now and it's very scary. Just the other day, Warner Brothers once again canceled a finished movie with the Coyote vs. Acme film that apparently was completely done and had really strong test scores at screenings. Now, recent reports do seem to indicate that Warner might allow the film to be sold elsewhere. But keep in mind that was only after being absolutely eviscerated in the press and social media by every single entertainment outlet, as well as a 100% united public and fandom. If we had remained silent, this potential option might not have shown itself. Do you have any idea how terrifying that is? Especially as a filmmaker. You work so hard to get that ever-elusive green light. And someone gives you that green light. And you're like, all right, I'm in. But now I better really focus because I got to make this thing. All right, I made it. Holy shit, we got through it. All right, we did all of post all of the CG, all of the animation. We've got the score. It's edited. It's being tested. 
holy shit, like we're here. And then some guy just checks a few boxes on a form and says, fuck you, I want a tax write-off. That's the world we're living in right now. And no one's taking this seriously. People are pissed about it. But I'm telling you, like, these are all really bad omens. David Zaslav takes over an entire movie studio who doesn't care about film, obviously, who will literally cancel and completely just delete from existence a movie that James Gunn has a screen story credit on. And Gunn is working quite a lot with Warner Brothers right now, isn't he? That's where we're at. Entire filmmakers, movies, and TV shows are disappearing from streaming services. For example, did you know that Mike Flanagan's great movie Hush is no longer on Netflix? That was a Netflix movie. It's nowhere. You can't watch Hush anywhere right now legally. It just doesn't exist. There was never a Blu-ray. It's erased until somebody picks it up at some point, and maybe that'll happen, maybe it won't. This is why people are concerned. I don't think this is just that Simpsons meme of the old man yelling at a cloud. I really do think that there are really bad signs here. If the big franchise that's been keeping theaters afloat over the years is going downhill and less people are attending them, that's really bad for movie theaters. If subscriber numbers for streaming services are also going down and every streaming service keeps upping their prices and adding ad plans and all kinds of things that make less people want to watch, and movies are being dumped on these streaming services that you never knew existed, that had no publicity, and as already discussed, the exact opposite, where movies and TV shows are just deleted from the streaming services and no longer exist, and some stores are choosing not to sell physical media anymore. What exactly is happening to this art form that we all know and love so much? Is it truly just becoming a bunch of numbers somewhere? I'm very passionate about this, and normally I would laugh right now and say something self-deprecating, but I don't think that I should. I really do think this is a big problem. And the only way that I can foresee it being fixed is if we do for a lot of movies what we did for Barbie and Oppenheimer. And obviously that's not to just reward every movie that comes out in theaters by going, but I do think that a retooling of our approach to seeing movies needs to happen. I know that not everybody can always go to a movie. I know that not everybody can buy a Blu-ray for everything that comes out. I'm well aware. I don't even buy as many Blu-rays as I used to, but I don't have space for it anymore now that I have twin boys. And I also know that you can't always make it to a movie. As I said, I have twin boys. If I go to a theater, it's usually like the 10.30 p.m. showing after they go to bed. That's when I can find time for that. Right now, as I film this, it's like 11 o'clock at night because my kids went to bed and I now have time to do it. So I don't want to sit here and look like I'm someone who's trying to encourage people to change their lives around to support film, but I do think that we need to change the way we view it because at the end of the day, I think there is one thing that all of us can agree on. Not everyone's going to agree with Martin Scorsese in his comments. Not everyone's going to agree that the MCU movies and shows are going downhill. A lot of people like what they're seeing. And not everyone cares about going to a movie theater. There's really annoying people sometimes with cell phones and people are loud and it's not always the best experience. And some people can't go to a movie theater. Maybe they physically cannot get out of their house to go to a movie theater. Everyone has a different life. But I do think the one thing we can all agree on is that as film lovers, as people who appreciate movies who want to either make them or just love watching them, we would like to watch good ones, right? We want to see good movies. We want to be transported to another world. We want to feel like we've just experienced something that changes us in some way or that hit us in the emotions, made us feel something, or that was just a great time. We want to be scared, we want to laugh, we want to cry, all that stuff. We want to watch good movies. And we want to have variety. We want to be able to watch a superhero movie, but also watch a courtroom drama or a character study about someone who's dealing with some psychological issue. And that's how it used to be. You used to get all of that. I do think that, in general, streaming is to blame. And this year with the strikes, this is the first time actors and writers have ever said, hey, we gave you guys a decade of this weird shit where you didn't report your numbers and nobody knows how many people watched our movies and shows and we're done with that shit. You guys have to pay us. 
and you have to be more transparent. Because if you look back to like the real popularity of streaming post 2010, you start to see a push towards certain kinds of movies. Rom-coms are almost exclusively on streaming. Gigantic tentpole movies only in theaters. Smaller films are thriving at the art house. This is why A24 is so respected. They really are taking chances on strange mid-budget projects that do reach an audience. And I think and I hope that that could potentially be the next big thing. Because I think a lot of us are craving originality, weird shit. Not everybody is. I've been to a ton of screenings in Cleveland, packed with audiences for like weird movies, and I've heard the way people talk about them when they leave. But it's what these movies do with those expectations. When I saw Bo is Afraid, for instance, I thought that movie was so weird, and I respected the hell out of it. It was so well made. Did I get it? Not really. Did I need to understand all of it? No. Did that scare me? No, it fucking enthralled me. And yet tons of people skipped out on that movie because they were like, I don't want to do the work of figuring that out. And that really bothers me because a lot of us do this. What I'm doing right now, we sit in front of our cameras, we make a YouTube video or we write articles or we blog or we write for a paper, whatever. And we ask Hollywood to not do what the MCU is currently doing. We say, please stop doing that. Please like be better, make more original shit. And then when they do, we're like, hold on. I don't understand any of that. That was weird. Why'd you, why'd you make me watch that? Why was there a big old penis in the attic? <laughs> Bo is Afraid is a big example for me. It did not do well at the box office as I predicted in my review. And just recently, A24 announced that they would try to start making some slightly more mainstream stuff along with some of their more groundbreaking things. That's an interesting development that they would acknowledge that they need to make slightly more crowd-friendly movies to be able to afford to make movies like Bo is Afraid because we didn't pay for it. You know, I mean, you got Martin Scorsese sitting there with Ari Aster encouraging people to watch this movie, this fucking legend of filmmaking, sitting with a guy who's made three movies. And you got Joaquin Phoenix coming off of his Academy Award win for The Joker, which is one of the most iconic characters ever. It just seems like it should work. But this is the world we live in, man. People are afraid to be challenged. We want easy. We want simple. We want to be able to look up the movie and have it explained to us instantly. I used to make explained videos. I stopped. There didn't used to be a thousand explained videos on the internet like at all. I was one of the few people who did it back in the day. But I think this is dangerously translating into us just being afraid to watch anything that might make us uncomfortable, that we're not instantly aware of, that we have to really think about a little bit. I hope that we can find a place for this type of stuff. And, and no, I do not think it's just dumping them on streaming. But I am very curious to hear your guys' thoughts on all of this. I, I do really love this art form and I love going to the movies. I try to see everything. There are so many movies I see that I never talk about. I just saw Ghost in the Shell this week. It was re-released in theaters and I got to see that in the theater, which was great. I saw Meg Ryan's directorial movie with David Duchovny, What Happens Later. I went and saw that anime film, The Tunnel to Summer, The Exit of Goodbyes. I went and saw Anatomy of a Fall. I saw Next Goal Wins. I saw The Marsh King's Daughter. Nobody else did. And I guess at the end of the day, I just wanted to make sure that I said something about all this because I really have a bad feeling and I'm scared for the future of this art form that I love. I've just finally made my first movie and it is a real goal of mine to make original movies. There's just so many topics that all relate to one central thing, which is a fear of the future for this beloved art form. And uh, I'm worried about movie theaters. I'm worried about physical media. I'm concerned about movies and TV shows disappearing off of streaming platforms. And now studios, gratefully, just one studio, WB, that is just straight up erasing movies before they're even released. And they're done already. And everyone worked on them. And it's just insane. It's the most insane thing I've ever seen in this business outside of Harvey Weinstein. And I just can't believe that anybody would want to sign a contract with somebody like that, knowing that you could do all that work for years of your life and just have some guy be like, mm, no. Anyway, guys, I would love to hear your thoughts on the state of the industry, the MCU, 
Marvel's, Martin Scorsese, uh, movie theaters, all of it. Uh, I'm very fascinated by this topic, physical media. I am kind of a glass half full kind of guy. I am an optimist, but there are too many things happening right now that really scare me. And if I can ever be in a position in my life where I can impact this industry for the positive, I'm going to try my damnedest to do that. Guys, thank you so much, as always, for watching. Look forward to more videos very soon. And if you like this, you can click right here and get stuckmanized.